Hey there YouTubers, this is Amberola1B coming to you with a video, an unboxing video of an 8mm Bell & Howell projector that I bought off of a seller on eBay. And he uh, packaged it up pretty good with some bubble wrap and he not only put a sticker on the outside saying fragile handle with care but he also wrote in red magic marker do not throw and that's probably why it arrived in good condition and the box was nice and sturdy so I'm gonna take it out of the box and we will see what it looks like okay now that it's out of the box we'll see what condition it's in the case looks pretty sturdy and it wasn't damaged in shipping. I really like how well designed this case is. It looks like it's well put together and it's sturdy and it opens up like this and this is the projector. Looks pretty good. Looks like it might be in good condition. A little uh, hand turning motor knob turns freely and once I take it out I'm going to test it out to see if the projector itself runs alright here's the projector out of the case and um, its main functions are the projector main on and off switch the lamp on and off switch the direction switch for forward reverse and rewind the pilot lamp which works and this is the motor speed knob which moves freely and this is the um, lens gate and the picture gate which opens alright that works the sprocket retaining clips work all right, let's uh, see if this thing will run. Move it to forward position. Now the clutch is disengaged, so all it's going to go on first is going to be the motor. Let's see if this actually runs. Well, the motor's nice and quiet and it does turn. But how smooth does it work? Let's see if it does work. I'm going to put the clutch in gauge. Let's see if we can get the mechanism to turn. No. Unfortunately. The mechanism isn't turning. And I know it's wrong because it's, I've seen this before. There's a rubber tire that's around an idler wheel that attaches to the main drive motor and it's supposed to engage with the shutter assembly to drive the whole projector mechanism and it's not engaging. Now what I've seen happen is that these, the rubber tire on that idler wheel will have a flat spot on it so it's not engaging with the drive wheel on the motor. Speed does work. Let's see if I can get it to rewind. Okay, that does work. It's a little noisy, but it does work. I think this mechanism is going to need a little lubrication. And when I disengage the clutch, it releases the extra tension to the drive motor. All right, at least I know that does work. 
It's a relatively quiet projector, except for the fact that the uh, main drive wheel isn't engaging with the mechanism to uh, drive the sprockets and the uh, sprocket claw to drive the film through the aperture. So I'm going to have to take this apart and uh, try to get it to work. All right, I'm back with the Bell & Howell 8mm projector. Now I did some experimenting with this projector off screen because I didn't want to film it and waste time trying to fix or diagnose the problem if I couldn't fix it. So what I did was I tried to work on the take up and a few other things. What was happening with the take up was it wasn't working correctly. Now this is the second example of this projector I bought. The first one I bought had the same take up problem as this one. Whereas when I turned on the motor and tried to hold on to the reel while the motor was turning, the motor would stall out and it would stop and it's not supposed to do that. This is supposed to work on a slip clutch mechanism so that when the motor's turning, if you hold on to the reel, the motor is supposed to keep turning. Just like when you're playing a film. Once the film is winding onto the take up, it's not supposed to have so much tension that the take up is like going to rip the film apart. It's supposed to have just gentle tension while the motor's turning and it's supposed to take up the film gently. So the first example of this projector, I tried to take the uh, take up mechanism apart because hey, it was assembled by people, it should be able to come apart. But that wasn't happening. So I removed this back cover and tried to disassemble this. I tried to remove the Allen screws and nothing was coming apart. If for some reason it was just so, you know, it's stubborn that it would not give in and come apart. And so while I had this thing all loose, I removed this little cover and in, in amongst all the dried grease in there, I found about two or three dozen very, very tiny ball bearings. Apparently there's a raceway around the back end of this part of the mechanism where those ball bearings were probably surrounding it and they allowed the take-up mechanism to run smoothly and everything. And so I disrupted their position back there and they all fell out. And so that's why whenever I tried to reassemble this and tighten up the Allen screws, it would just wobble when I tried to run it. It wouldn't run you know, tight together. So I messed that up and I wasn't able to fix it. So I just decided to go out and try to look for another one on eBay. And luckily the day after I found another example of this projector. And instead of trying to take that one apart, it had the same problem as the first one. So what I did was I just removed this back cover here and decided to squirt a bunch of squirts of WD-40 in there to see if that would correct the problem. So I put the take-up reel on here, started the motor up, held on to the reel, and the motor was still stalling out. And I'm like, what the heck? So after running it for several minutes and trying that, all of a sudden, the stiffness of the shaft must have let go, and then it started to work correctly. I held on to the reel, and the motor was still turning. So this is how it's supposed to work. You hold on to the reel, and it's just got a gentle torque to it, and the motor keeps turning. Another thing I found out through disassembling that first projector was how it worked. Now I'm not very good at ex explaining things but there are several kind of like what look like gears in there and there's a, a slip gear. When you have it in run mode that slip gear pulls toward this way allowing the take up part of the mechanism to turn. When you reverse the motor, that slip gear, I don't know if it's through centrifugal force or what, but pushes over to this way to turn this part of the mechanism for reverse and rewind. So here it is in forward, running this part of the take-up shaft. You'll notice this one is freewheeling and turns freely. When you put it in reverse and rewind, that gear shifts over, and now this part is turning and this part is freewheeling. So I was able to fix that. The other thing that I couldn't get working in the first part of the video was the to get the mechanism to turn because that idler wheel with that rubber tire on it 
wasn't engaging with the motor and with the shutter shaft to get the whole mechanism to turn. Well, I don't know, the next day when I started it up and I put it in gear, all of a sudden it started to turn. But it was kind of noisy and I'm going to let you listen to hear what that sounds like. give you a little close-up of the projector uh, mechanism of the film going through it. Now, when I first got this projector, it had a different faceplate on the front of it. I'll zoom in on that. Not that you can probably see it too clearly. But this is the original faceplate that was on the front of it. It's kind of dirty and the metal around the outside is kind of corroded and uh, pitted. And I won't be able to really polish that up and shine it and make it look pretty the way I want to. And even though the font is different on this one, the um, other original faceplate that I had on the other example is much cleaner. It's much more perfect looking. And even though the font is different, I like this one better, so I attached that faceplate to this projector. All right, I'm back with the Bell & Howell projector from 1948, and I was going to disassemble the front part to see what it looked like inside as far as how dirty it was and how much restoration actually needs to be done to it. Because as I said before, the little idler wheel in there that drives the whole mechanism in the front uh, was noisy and I wanted to see what it looked like so I disassembled uh, I took out two of the screws and now I'm just going to take out the last two so we'll see how this looks <laughs> Alright, actually it looks very clean and uh, doesn't hardly have any dirt in there at all and uh, as old as this is, it looks like it's hardly ever been used. The gasket is broken, but that's okay. I got the uh, good solid one from the first projector that I bought and um, the mechanism does turn extremely freely very nice <clears throat> and this is the outside rim on the shutter where the uh, idler wheel rubs against to drive the whole mechanism and this is the inside what it looks like got that in shot maybe I'll give it a little close-up all right now <clears throat> The shutter mechanism goes around the outside of this wheel here and when this turns like this and the projector gets up to speed, the little dowser moves out of the way to um, emit the light to go through the lens, through the film and to the screen. And this is the drive motor shaft up here and this is the idler wheel that uh, is in question. When you flick up the clutch to engage everything, then the idler wheel will engage with the motor and with this shaft, or rather the outside shaft of the shutter, and uh, it'll, once it gets up to speed, it'll move this out. And then this disengages the uh, idler wheel. Now, I'm not sure if I turn on this light here, Um, I don't know if you can see, but there is a flat spot right here and another one right here. And uh, I believe the other reason why this uh, motor was turning so noisily when it was engaged is because I'm sure the rubber is all dried out and it's not supple, so it's 
not really gripping the motor shaft here it's just rubbing against it but it's very hard rubber and so it's making it noisy to uh, run the motor otherwise this thing would run relatively quietly so what I'm gonna try to do is even though I'm having one of the idler wheels from the other machine serviced and resurfaced over at Voice of Music Enthusiasts I'm going to disassemble this one and I'm going to, and I'll try to um, sand them down so that they're less noticeable and if it doesn't work you know I'm not really losing anything because I have that other idler wheel coming back from the other uh, from Voice of Music to uh, replace it this one with it this is a short video clip I wanted to make of what the inside of this gearbox looks like on this Bell & Howell 8mm projector. This is the spare mechanism that I saved from the first model of this projector that I bought. And I retired the other part of the projector because I couldn't repair it after how I inadvertently messed it up. But I wanted to show you what it looks like on the inside of this gearbox. So I unscrewed the cover. And as you can see, it's packed with very thick grease all that is grease on the inside there and so I'm going to show you how the other projector mechanism that I cleaned out looks what I did to clean it out was I took a very wide blade flat blade screwdriver and I scooped out the majority of the grease and then got a bunch of q-tips and detailed it but then I did something that you purists probably aren't going to like I took some Dawn dishwashing detergent and very, very hot water and a toothbrush and a paintbrush and gently scoured this whole mechanism. And I was able to get all the rest of the dried grease out by taking the toothbrush and brushing it against the teeth of the gears and got it all cleaned out of all the old grease. In fact, a lot of the grease had formed a very thick skin around the edges of the gears that I had to peel off and it came off in big sections so a lot of that grease had dried on to these gears and I wanted to clean them off what I'm gonna do is go to the automotive store and get some very thick modern grease and grease the inside of this gearbox and I believe it has to be thick so that it doesn't leak out because there are open ports next to where the sprockets are on the top and the bottom here and grease could leak out in there so it has to be very thick but it also can't be packed in there so tight that it's going to uh, not have any room for the gears to move and it's going to leak out in, in any of those areas so I'm going to go and buy some grease and I'm going to pack this little baby back up with brand new thick grease and put the cover back on and then restore this back onto the projector and incidentally I think this is a great invention of, of how to remove this front part of the projector to service it as well as clean it because everything is right together there and uh, you don't have to worry about any parts springing apart or anything as to how to service it or repair it everything is right there and I wish other Bell & Howell model projectors had been this simple to disassemble because I own a 16 millimeter projector, a sound projector, a model 1585 that you have to take the entire projector apart to get to that dreaded worm gear which is made out of metal, a metal core with a plastic gear teeth and those gear teeth over time will wear and they will split and uh, the gear will have to be replaced but you have to literally disassemble the whole projector just to get to it whereas with this everything is made out of metal and all I had to do to clean this was just to rinse it out and then to dry it out I put it in my air convection oven at about 130 140 degrees to dry out all the moisture and now it works just as well it just has to be re-greased and I'll show you what it looks like after I re-grease it Okay, I'm back, but unfortunately I wasn't as lucky as I thought I would be. I went to the automotive store and they, the thickest grease that the guy showed me was about the same consistency as Vaseline. And I knew that wasn't going to cut it because this has to be very, very, very thick grease. So I did something that I basically didn't want to do, but I'm glad that I saved the old grease. 
and I smeared it on a piece of tin foil and then put it aside because I put it in a small container. I scraped it off the tin foil and put it on a small container and mixed it back together to reamalgamate it. And I put it back into the gearbox. And this was all of the grease that was on that piece of tin foil. And I didn't think it was a, a, a lot when I uh, started packing it in there. And I'm like, wow, I didn't realize this was that much grease. So I was able to repack this and now I'm just going to reinstall it back onto the projector. This is just a short clip of the replacement idler wheel that I had resurfaced over at Voice of Music. It's got new rubber on it and now it's got plenty of grip. And I'm going to reassemble the projector now and uh, let you get a listen to how it sounds. And I'll even give you a demonstration on how to thread it up. Alright, now that the Bell and Howell projector is all put together, I'm going to give you a quick demonstration on how to thread this particular model. Now, every projector, whether it be 8mm, 16 or 35mm, all thread differently. And I just wanted to show you how this one threads up. So I'm going to get a close-up of the mechanism. And to show you, the first thing I'm going to do is pull down about 3 or 4 feet of leader. And then I'm going to thread it to the left-hand side of this guide roller and underneath the top sprocket. So if my hands don't get in the way too much, you'll see that the film goes on, on the left-hand side of the guide roller and under the sprocket. Now, to engage the film in the sprocket properly, you have to lift up on this little retaining clip. And once you do that and the film is clipped into the sprocket, you can rock the film back and forth to see if it's engaged in the teeth and if it doesn't move freely you know it's engaged properly and then you have to open up the aperture gate which is open already and then you thread the film straight through the gate and then you want to make a top loop here and you want the loop to be about one finger's width and once it's engaged properly and you got the proper size loop you close the aperture gate and then you want to do the same thing to the bottom you want to form another loop about the same size the loops are very important as they keep the film moving through the, the projector mechanism properly. If the loops are not maintained, the film will get damaged and break. So then you want to put the film underneath the lower sprocket and then lift up on this little retaining clip and engage the film in the sprocket, engaging the sprocket teeth. Once it's engaged properly and you can't move the film, then you know the projector mechanism is threaded correctly. Then you want to push in on the flywheel knob and check your work. Now the top loop could probably be a little bit bigger, and so I'll just move it up so that they're about the same size. And if the loops are maintained, then you know the projector is threaded properly. There's a little intermittent pull-down claw behind here that pulls down the teeth of the sprockets of the film one frame at a time. It moves in and pulls the film down by the sprocket and then moves out and then moves back up to pull down another frame of film and moves out and it does this in a very fast motion while the film is running and that's how it works. Alright, this is another little clip that I'm going to splice into this video showing how the intermittent claw pulls down a frame of film to be exposed onto the screen. This is from the first example again of the other projector that I got. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the truck, the chuck of my cordless drill and I'm going to insert it into the flywheel and make it turn, showing you how the intermittent movement works. And I'm going to try to zoom in on this part of the projector and show you how that works. If I get it at the right angle and turn this just so and it should show you how this works. Now if I don't get it out of frame or out of angle, this should work the way I want it to. Now as you can see when the intermittent claw moves forward it is being pulled into a sprocket on the film pulling it down to be exposed in the aperture gate and when the intermittent claw moves out of the way that's when the film is exposed onto the screen for that 1 24th of a second or 1 18th of a second. And then the intermittent claw will pull another frame of film down and then move out of the way to expose that frame. And this is what it looks like at full speed.
So I just wanted to show you that little bit. And now back to the other video. So I'm going to zoom back out. And then the last thing you have to do is really just put the film underneath these two guide rollers and then thread it onto the take-up reel. And then once it's on the take-up reel, take up the slack. And then you can turn on the projector. Now the projector is going to be out of running mode when you turn it on just to check your work and make sure everything's all right. You're going to have it in the forward position. And then once you turn on the motor, the, the take-up reel is going to want to turn and it's going to give the film a little tug. But that's okay because the take-up reel is always turning when the motor is on. And that's what I was trying to get across to everybody in the beginning of this video was that when I was stopping the take-up reel and the motor would stall out and it's not supposed to do that. So we're going to see how it runs now. It's got a gentle torque to it and it's not going to break the film. Now the motor still does have a little bit of a noise to it because of that new idler wheel of the rubber on it. And I don't believe it was applied uh, perfectly. I think it's a little tiny bit out of round, so you're gonna hear a little noise going on when the projector clutch is engaged. So here's what it sounds like with the film running through the projector. But it is a heck of a lot quieter than it was from when it was uh, first in the beginning of the video. Now this film here that I have on the projector was given to me in a box of a bunch of audio tapes, reel-to-reel -reel tapes. And I don't think the guy that gave it to me knew that this reel of film was in there. And it's... Uh, home movies that somebody shot back in the late 50s or early 60s uh, of his travel in France and it's pretty interesting it's a lot of film but it's not going to be uh, a boring little show here and if anybody wants to stay and see the film you're welcome to do so so I'm going to aim the projector at the screen and start the show grab the popcorn everybody I think you'll like this
when that is the end of the film. Now I'm going to turn the lights back on and stop the projector. Okay, and to rewind the film, you just take the tail end of the film and place it back under the two guide rollers that you fed it through to play the film and put it back in the slot on the supply reel. And then you just merely put it in reverse, disengage the clutch and put it back in rewind. And I turn the speed all the way up and you'll see this thing rewind the film in less than 20 seconds. And that's my presentation of the Bell & Howell Filmo 8mm Picture Master Projector from 1948. And until next time, this is Amberola 1B saying see ya, take care, bye bye.